<laughs> right, I want to take this a little bit deeper then, right? So bear with me on this and you might agree or disagree, right? So you, you know when you were first starting out? Yeah. Did you know that you wanted to sort of sort of break the mold, as it were, to get to the position that you're in now? So to be more uncommon with with, with what like the position that you're in? Because not many people are ever going to hit a million subscribers. Oh, you're talking about YouTube? YouTube, sorry. Yeah. So when you dedicated, the, like, when you said, right, this is what I'm going to do. Because you're going to break the mold and you've thought, right, I'm going to set up a YouTube channel and I'm going to fucking go for it. Did you think I'm going to make it? No, I didn't. I never really thought I would set up a channel. And I never really thought I'm going to set up a channel and go for it. it beca- but that's like, everyone's probably heard that from me hundreds of times before. It started out as a hobby, didn't it? Like yeah, no, but when you saw it, were like, you mean you, when you I were kinda, on to summit? Yeah, when I kind of jumped, when I left my job, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. I still never really thought I would, I never thought I would hit a, a million subscribers. Okay. I would have th- If you told me that, like, whatever, whenever, whenever I left 2016, maybe, when I left my real job, um... I, I would have thought you were, there was something wrong with you probably. Um, but I, I didn't really, I didn't set up goals. My, my, my YouTube channel, oddly, is probably one area in my life where it's, it's the least goal orientated in a funny way because I, you know me, I don't spend a lot of time looking at the metrics and whatnot. No. And uh, I did, I, but I do um, certainly around, maybe after a year or two of trying to gradually improve the quality, there was a point when it kind of became a bit more structured in that like a day at work for me would yeah. be like, not just filming and editing. If the, if I wasn't doing one of those two things, I'd be objectively trying to look at how to make what it was I was doing better or how yeah. to make it more appealing. So um, I suppose I set goals in, in, in that way, but I didn't really, I never set out to say, oh, I'm going to have a million. You know, like Mr. Beast always yeah. talks about, I am, he's, he, there's a famous video on his channel, right? Where it's him at, like, talking to himself yeah. at a later point in time, which is a very cool idea, by the way. But um he, he always knew, didn't he, yeah. in, in some capacity that he would be a very successful cr- content creator. That's I never a, knew that. That's a pretty good example, right? So, like, it's like the old saying, it? it's uh, at first they laugh and then they ask how. So whenever you're taking on any sort of task or challenge, this, it's not you're never going to be spoon-fed and it, no one's ever going to sort of hold your hand and get you there. And I always remember thinking, like, so my motivation for starting sort of business videos, all these things, I remember watching, believe it or not, watching, like, Top Gear back in the day, and I mentioned it before, but I remember watching that and going... That is an incredible job, right? So I remember watching it thinking, if they can, if that can be their job, then it can be done. No one's going to show you how to do it, but if that, if that's, if, if you want, if you want to go get that, you can go get it. But to do that, you're going to have to put yourself well out of your comfort zone and you're going to have to try and figure it out. And people are going to point and be like, what the fuck's he doing? Or what are they doing? Yeah. But eventually you might actually get there, but through a lot of hard work. So that's why I were asking, you know, like, did you think, yeah, I'm mean, gonna might look a bit of a twat at the beginning, but I know I will get there in the end. Yeah, but that, you know me. That's that's no obstacle to me. I, I'm not. You must have. You must have had some sort of. You must have been slightly self conscious a little bit, maybe when you were at work. Were you conscious of what people thought? Like, no, but I, I, I've never been that that way inclined. I mean, I hate to like ruin your line of questioning, but um, <laughs> no, but I, th- I, th- I get that though. I understand that because because um, that would be the d- deterrent for most people. A good a, an example would be like my when I left my job, my dad. Rest his soul. Um, he was he he didn't want me to leave my, my job. Yeah, because he just hated what I, the what I, at first anyway hated what I did. Um, or not that, that, that's probably the wrong word, but he thought he just thought it was a dumb thing. But, not, but you would expect that from a parent not really understanding YouTube and whatnot. And I don't think he had a great deal of confidence in me in terms of making good decisions <laughs> in life. But um, I think that was the only time I cared because it was my dad. Yeah. So I kind of thought like, oh, well, if my dad says this, you, you listen to your dad, don't you? Dad's not going to say you wrong. Yeah. And that's probably the one time I just thought you're wrong. Yeah. And I know you're wrong and I think I can make it work. Right. And, uh, but like everyone else is that, that's just noise, but that's, I can understand why a lot of content creators would be. And a lot, I think a lot of them probably are people that make YouTube videos probably aren't don't become successful um, because of, of maybe they get uh, they put off by like the, the negativity be it from yeah. people in their, in their lives, real people that care about to even like uh, internet trolls. And you, you know, you've, you've seen those like memes or like uh, visual representations of like a miner and you're something that's digging through a wall yeah. and the diamonds are on the other side of the wall and they're like an inch away and, and they then, turn back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit like that, but it takes, I think a special type of person not special in that they're better than other people. That you have to have a particular mindset, I think, to not let other things affect you. If you know that you're on, uh, you know, like a path towards you're on the right path. Something. And to, to me, it was never like I never wanted to 
fucking take over the world or be like a Mr. Beast or anything. I just wanted to make entertaining content. It would be that for like minimum wage or for way more than that. Yeah. yeah I, as long as I was doing it and I was happy doing it, um, I knew it would, it, it, you know, like it, it, um, it'd grow. But like, yeah, I, I kind of, I feel bad for people like that as well. I got a message the other day from somebody who's, uh, who would, um, had a, ch- has a small, a reasonably small channel, you'd say. Um, and she, she messaged me and said, oh, I keep getting these really uh, hurtful messages from trolls. And like, I watch your channel. I just wondered how you, how you deal with it. And I was like, I'm probably the worst person to ask. Cause I don't, I don't deal with it. But I, was, I, I just said, so the only thing you can really think of, I guess really is that somebody's got a time of day to sit there and comment on a, on a, on a channel. And especially if they're repeat commenters, you're doing more towards achieving something you want to achieve. It sounds kind of hokey and, uh, and, and a bit, um, vapid but like that's good advice right yeah. if somebody's going to take the time to criticize you you're probably doing something right i think you know so yeah and like just what back to what you said about your uh your old man if he was slightly uh against the idea of it that's probably something to consider if you've got if you're like if you're unwavered and uncompromised in your sort of dedication to achieve something even the closest around you with your best interests at heart, that is going to try and deter you from doing stuff. Yeah. I remember that. Like, I remember when I said I was going to first do this. So, like, I I bounced out of, like, left pension, left everything behind. I'm like, I'm doing this. And everyone thought I'd lost my head. But I was, like, I was that, completely unwavered. I was like, I will do this. That's it, what it takes though, sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, the problem is, I think, and I had it as well. Like, when I left my, my job, I'm, I come across, like, oh, it was just, oh, I just left my job. I just bought a house when I left my job. And I remember the conversation with, the, with Mrs. Beard. Like we bought a house three weeks earlier and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving this job. And she didn't kick off or anything. That's credit to Lynn. She was yeah. like, oh, okay. And I think she was a bit worried. Naturally you would be, but I think you conditioned us, especially if you, if you, if you work in like a tertiary industry and you work in an office or something like that, but probably as much like if you work in the Navy or whatever to think, right, this is secure, right? Yeah, you've yeah. got your pension, you've got your perks, which a perk to me is I get three extra days holiday because I've worked at the bank for 10 years what the fuck kind of perk is that? It's like Mike talking about that dude who won a lawnmower. And you can <laughs> yeah, like, to think yeah. that, that, you know, you're, that's where you should be and that's where you're safe. But I, to me, it's always like, again, it sounds kind of corny, but you get one life, don't you? And like, you could always get another job. You can, like, if, especially I always thought like, I was, when I thought I was thinking about it, I was like, right, well, I've got the, I've got these bills to pay and I've got this to pay. What's the worst that can happen? My house is repossessed. My mum's not going to let me go homeless. So it can be, it, I think it's the fear of of leaving something which is familiar, yeah. which can often hold you back. And and I could that, the worst thing I could think of now is I'm thinking, fuck, like what would have happened if if I thought no, it's too much of a risk, you know? I'd still be working a fucking dead end job. Yeah. I'd still be miserable. I think you you'll get to a point where you know it's the right time to take the jump. Yeah, yeah. even if those around you disagree. And I were exactly the same, you know, like we'd got we'd just got a house. We were just about to get married. <laughs> and I was like, this is me. I'm going for it. Um, and yeah, like I, for me, I'm like, well, what's the worst that could happen? Like I might match my salary. I can I might get to the point where I can match my salary mm. from when I were, were, were at sea or I might get close, but I'll be way happier. And uh, it's weird, man. I was like, you, you sort of goals change at first. I want to like scale up. Let's make this big agency. We sort of got there a little bit and that was fucking hard work. I was, I was more miserable with bags of members of staff doing the corporate stuff. I remember, I remember. Yeah. Uh, like I was, I was ready to sort of jack, I was going to jack it all in. I was like, I've had enough of this. And then we've sort of turned it back a bit now. And like, this is probably best it best it could be, but you've got to be, you've got to be sort of bold in them decisions as well, aren't you? When you're taking on more responsibility. But yeah, yeah. I think it's, um, I think that's the key to it is knowing when to jump and like, you've got to go for it. Cause like you said, what's the worst that could happen? You fail and go back and get your job again. Yeah, I think, I think that now, I mean, like if, if YouTube ends tomorrow, <laughs> of course I'd be, I'd be sad that I don't get to reach the community that you have, uh, I've garnered, I guess, over the years, but ultimately that's, nobody's going to die either, you know? No. I mean, we are, we're all going to die at some point, but I'm just, what I mean is you're not going to die as a result of that decision. And if that's not, if the worst that happens is you lose loads of money. And, you know, like, I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world, but I think that comes down to your mindset, like what you're motivated by in life, I think. I've, I've got a question for, for like both of you. Um, was there anybody that you sort of saw in that field? So like Josh, for you, like doing, like a, a, having a media company or anything like that, or Beard, someone with a YouTube channel that... George, you've got to stop calling me Beard, man. It's getting weird now. <laughs> <laughs> do, it, do it for the audience, do it for the audience. Um, But yeah, anybody that you sort of saw doing it, that really like tipped you over the edge and thinking, yeah, that's actually really achievable. Like I could do that. 
No, I didn't. I, but I, I didn't. I never watched YouTube, honestly. Like, I mean, I didn't. I never watch it. I, it was YouTube to me was one of those things I didn't even understand when I started doing it. I yeah. know you can make money from it or anything. Um, so I, but like I've never really had things in like you know people that you look up to. Which but apart from like your parents, yeah. I've never really like idolized people and thought, oh, because they do this, I can do it. Um, I just like I, it was all that. It, that's one thing you could credit YouTube with as a platform. Is it somewhere you can kind of naturally. Find your tribe, find yeah, yeah, your yeah. audience. And, and you don't need, I don't think you, you know, when people, you see these videos, and, uh, you know, like how to channels on YouTube, and they'd be like, grow your channel. Yeah. And it's like, they'll have like pictures of Mr. Beast in there and whatnot. And you're like, and it's never been a massive motivation for me to grow my channel. It's just like you submit content there and people watch it. And if they like it, more people will come and watch it. So I, ne- I never really saw something and I thought, I think oh, you're answering it there. You did right with that. Like if you're watching the Think like think Media or whatever these channels, like there's a bunch of channels that's like, get to a thousand subscribers in X and you know, like do this and you'll get this sponsor, whatever. Like if you're doing, if you're following that recipe, that ain't the path you want to be on. Everyone's following it. That means you're baking the same cornbread as everyone else, man. You know, <laughs> you, if you want to, you want, you want to make something special. Not that I would, I mean, Think Media probably, they they're, they're, they actually do a lot of, like in terms of technical stuff. No, yeah, it's really useful content. But, but, more, like, but if you're making content that's like, it's for that sort of like, if that's the goal, you know, like yeah. if that's, if you, it, it doesn't work, like you're yeah. not, you're not going to find longevity. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, George, I, uh, it's a, a, the first person that I really got hooked on with Casey Knight's that like that his content. And I watched that similar to how I watched, um, sort of like the top gears and the, all that sort of stuff and thought that's somebody's, that's his job, yeah. you know? It, it, it's but it's a ten, it were a ten minute curated vlog that were incredible, like you know, were a nice sort of work of art. And I thought, how fun does that look? You know, what's your favorite K- Casey Neistat video? Do you have one? Do you know what I love that? that I love that one. Do what you can't. I don't know if that's the name of it, but that's the, that's repeated throughout the video. Do what you that's yeah, fucking that's amazing. A, yeah, that's it. Oh my, that's that gives me a hard on that video. <laughs> I, see, I I like <laughs> that's a bit much. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're dead right with that. Like um, that were a Nike advert, I believe. He, he, he made an advert for Nike for like they had like a, a sports band. Was it? I yeah. Well, that's how good it was. It take on. I didn't even know it was a Nike ad. Yeah, I mean, I just loved his like just the daily vlog. Like every single daily vlog was just for me. I just enjoyed watching him tell a little story and how raw it was. So like one thing you can get caught up in, as you well know, is like the technicalities of making videos, fucking frame rates and white balance and shit like that. He gets the shot to get the story. That's kind of it. It does always look good though. It does always look really good. Um, but New, I mean, New York City, man, like what a place yeah, to I suppose, shoot. I suppose it's always um, going to look good, isn't it? But yeah, I watched that and thought if I could even f- get a fraction of his ability or success that in my own, but again, it's got to be in your own style. So like you can't replicate it. Like I did, you know, the, I, I look at like the McKinnons and the Matty Potters, the, the filmmaking ones and thought, I can do that. And I started a channel on that basis and quickly fucking. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I saw Matt because I follow Matty Hapoy on Twitter. And that's a Twitter word then. <laughs> we uh, uh, on Twitter and he put up a tweet yesterday saying, just downloaded Da Vinci. And I was like, what do we do with that information? <laughs> Why are you talking? That's like me saying, just, just took, took out. Shit. Yeah, just, <laughs> just took a dump. Just just watching the news. <laughs> like, so what? But he's a, uh, yeah, he's a great, he's a great, uh, Great lad, his stuff always looks great. Yeah, his, his stuff always looks great. But like, so um, imitation is the greatest form of flattery and there's nothing original anymore, really. Even Beard's stuff is... is, is Why the is, fuck are you calling me Beard now? He's poached <laughs> off uh, Nathan Figueroa. <laughs> so, yeah. But like, that's another thing, you know, you can get caught up in like trying to be so unique, but you'll if you can put your own twist and spin on stuff, then you'll find your audience, you'll get a style and you'll, you'll then work it out. 